evening. The dark nights are, as they say, drawing in. Um, it's nearly six o'clock. By quarter past six, it's going to be black dark up here. I think it's about time we put some more lights on the van, don't you? You can never have enough lights on your van. <laughs> so we've uh, we've teamed up with Oxbeam. Oxbeam has sent us some absolutely beautiful lights. I'm going to show you them. Look at these. That is the size of my hand. They are a fist. They're bigger than my fist. I've got a big fist. <laughs> they are huge. Plus, the, what they call side shooters. So they kick out a little bit of light to the side as well. And they have an amber daylight running light. So let me just show you that. I think that's a really cool feature. Really cool feature. I love, I love it. I really do love it. So we've got two of them to fit. So to put these lovely big lights on, we need some lovely big, really tidy brackets so when i told sean i had these lights sean from mule he said let me give you a pair of my brackets so they fit directly onto the bonnet and i can mount them lights on and i can even slide them about a little bit so that's the plan we're going to fit these on the bonnet no need to show you that it's just really you just loosen a couple of bolts off stick them on that is it. So we're going to do that right now, and then we're going to stick them bad boys on. So, these are made from stainless steel. They are laser cut, hand finished, powder coated. Powder coated, not pound coated. But see them little slots there? They're for cable ties. So once you've got your lamp fitted on there, your spotlight, you can take the cable and feed it away from the hinge, which is a brilliant idea. These bolt straight onto the hinge. There's no modern to do. So if you're after a solution for bonnet spotlights, mule or your men, that is quality. And it, it's, you know, stainless steel. It's never going to rot. That is, I like it. I really do like it. The attention to detail is uh, second to none. Give you a little close-up. Anyway, let's get them stuck on the van. I've been pissing about for the last couple of days doing other jobs. Uh, Lisa wanted the house painted, so I've had to paint the house. So today we're going to remove the bonnet lamps. Now, I've had them on there probably two, two and a half years. And when I stuck them on, I don't think many people had even contemplated putting bonnet lights on. But anyway, I've done it. They're on there. And everywhere you go now, you see bonnet lamps. That bracket, um, I put it on and I've never had to go back to it. So I'm hoping it comes off nice and easy. But this hasn't fared too well. I am going to reuse this lamp somewhere else. So what I'll do is I'll split it down. I'll repaint it all. I'll probably get a nice enamel, gloss enamel for that. And redo them so they look a bit more like the Orcs beams. But this one here, no problem at all. Just a little bit there. Anyway, let's get them off. Time to get these fitted so these are the perfect combination in my eyes. You've got the mule bonnet bracket. You've got the aux beam, four inch side shooters with orange daylight running lights. These are going to be a game changer. I've already installed the light bar. I need to mod that. Um, it's creating quite a bit of wind noise. So we need to move that just a fraction further back. Not one, but two wiring looms to put into there. So this is for the side shooters the four inch spots and this is for let me have a look yeah this one is for the light bar that's going up there this is the biggest part of the job so i've got to wire both of these looms in but this one we need to extend because it's going up there it's not it's not long enough i'm gonna to have to make a, a little loom Hawks beam, if you're watching, this is something you should look into because, in all honesty, these are just too short. You know, put them on vans. If the lights were on the front of the vehicle, no problem at all. In fact, they're going 
three, four feet up there, you need a little loom. Have you just touched that? Me. So I've just been painting something and Riley has just walked over and touched it. It's obvious it's outside to dry. Have you got black paint on your hands out? No. Don't touch it again. What a balloon it. Anyway. Before you stick that up there, always bench test it. So hook it up to a battery. <laughs> that does let you some. Warning. 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 Right, always bench test them because once you get them up there, it's hard to fix a fault all the way up there. So that works. But these lights have another function. So you've got your you've got your brilliant light bar, but what about this? You can hook this up to your phone, play music through your phone, and have a little party. I can't wait to see how that looks at night. So we've had a change of location. I've come down to Cliff Yard because I need to strip out this dashboard. I need to get the cables run through to the other side, and I need to bring some cables back this way as well. So what we're going to do is strip out all the dashboard, and I need both doors open for this. So I'm going to crack on now. I'm having to hold you up there because of the sun. It's just, it's just not working with us anyway. Five minutes later, the dash is out. If you want to know how to remove that dash, I've got another video here for from when I installed my radio. I believe that is the one that shows you how to strip all this dashboard out. So have a look at that one. Um, I'll put a link up here. That should keep you right. But it is straightforward. Once you've taken these out a couple of times, you can put them in and out, no bother. Right, time to get busy. So this is the current setup for each one of them switches. Well, for the switches that are in operation, we have a relay and uh, they're just fastened there. And down here, we have our little distribution board. And if you remember, I cut out the back of this so we could actually get to it as we were driving. We don't really use this glove box for a lot. I don't know many people that do. We just have a first aid kit in there, an OBD reader, another OBD reader, <laughs> and our fuse board. So that is handy. I like where it is and we've got routes through here to under the dash that'll pick up the bonnet lights and the ones for the roof run along and through and down and up and round and all the way into that cupboard and then from that cupboard up onto the roof so now that you know that <laughs> that's a route we have to follow so somehow i have to get a cable or a rod all the way across there what we're going to use today is these rods, they're very flexible, they're electrician's rods. So what we'll do is we'll feed it through the dash. I do know that we can get across here because I've ran quite a lot of cables this way already. So we're hitting something there, but before... Oh, of course I would drop it under the van, wouldn't I? Before we rush around that side, let's add one more to the to the end. Brought a screwdriver with me just in case I need to take a couple of these panels off. We will take these off actually because we do at some point need to route these cables around. That's that one off. Um, let's got something in that. Let's move that out of the way. Pull that off. Like I say, once you get into the habit of taking these off, it becomes quite easy. So you now got to get your hands up behind the dash and we're looking for that cable. Oh, that is tight. I think what we might do is just take the header unit out. Again. It's only a couple of drivers. That screw, that screw there. The bottom ones are kind of fixed, but we'll 
I'll take them out anyway. Okay. That's two dropped anyway. So there is the blue rod. We now need to just angle that down, to be honest. I'll pull it back a little bit. Yes, we're through. Hey. There we are. Right, that's that. Before we pull that through, I want to put another cable onto that. Um, I've messed up a little bit with, with the cable that I ordered. I basically ordered a five core when I needed a six core. So we'll keep the five core, we'll run that up. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a 21 amp power cable up there as well. Go in a little junction box and we'll make everything off in that junction box. Right, now we've got that done. I'm going to thread it through. And this is where it gets interesting because although the rod kind of went through easy enough, we've got to make sure that we can now get it back with, with all these cables attached to it. So it's basically feed and push at the same time. And then you'll get to the point where You've got everything back where you need it to be. Right, that is there. That's where that needs to be. The 2x5 supply, which will connect to the relay. That will go there as well. And this cable here is the one that's going to go on the roof. So we will route it up to here. I'll put some Velcro ties on. We'll just clip it in with the Velcros. That's us done. Right, we're currently right wiring in the light bar. Um, because it's up on the roof, we're having to extend the cable. So I've got these little junction boxes here. Now the problem is, it's got two size, two different size cables. So this is the Orcs Beam original cable there, look. You've got two power, your, your positive and your negative, and then you've got your your RGB and white as well. So they are a smaller gauge cable. So what we've done is I ordered the wrong cable, but I've decided to wire things a different way. So I'm going to go from one junction box here to one on the roof, and then that way we can connect these up right. So we've got a 21 amp cable there. This is uh, supplied by a what's that 20 amp fuse so we are good with the 21 cable um so that's what will take the power this is more the control side so job done well this end's done we just need to screw it all away make our connections there that is that part done we then need to jump up on the roof but we won't be putting the fuse in until we are finished so that there is this end completed we'll dress the cables in tidy them up run the switch wire across to that side mount that job done well this is taking a little bit longer than i thought but anyway we've uh, we've got that connection done there i've run the cable across with the switch on for now i'm going to leave that switch in place but the plan is to put everything through one relay and that way we can just have the lights on the high beam um, for now, just to get this working, we'll uh, we'll leave that connection where it is. I'll show you. I've just put it down here. So we have a bank of switches here. I want to I want to kind of get rid of some of these as well. Just leave my fog lamps on there. Um, these are the perimeter lights for the roof. So I'll move them up there, and then I'll blank all this bottom row off again. That's a reverse and camera override. Um, we'll have that up there as well. But to be honest with you, I just want um, I want to make this a lot simpler i want the high beams the bonnet lights to come on with the high beam and the light bar and then for the red green blue disco side of it we're going to just leave that on a switch as well so I'll probably utilize that switch try and get another one that says perimeter light in but we'll see we'll see if we can get all the one so for now we can start putting all this part of the dashboard back together that will take a couple of minutes, but it'll tidy everything up quickly. There you go, all back together. We are 
about to try and pull the loom through into this area for the bonnet lights. Now they've got quite a big plug on them. I'm hoping we can manage to get it through here without any, without too much trouble. This has a cable tie on it, which we cut off. Now I've thread the rod, rod through and I've attached the loom to it. Let me just show you. So we've, uh, we've taped the loom on and we're gonna, this probably will take a bit of working through. So like 10 inch to a foot behind that, we have the second part. So once you get that one through, this one should come through quite easy. And then we'll split them and pull them through separately. So here it goes. Right, let's see if we can get this through. What I'm gonna do is wiggle it while I'm pulling it. Let's get that one out of the way. I think I may have to go and try and twist it. Yeah, we got it. That little twist worked. <laughs> right, end of that cable, I'll show you what that is. There's a big knuckle. What we'll first yarn through? Right, yeah. I've taped the other one to that. It's taped onto that one. Yeah. yeah, it might just need pulled back and turned. If you, if you trace your hand along it, it goes like in and up a little bit. I'll pull it now then. I don't want to pull, I don't want to pull it off. Yeah, we got it. That was through. So now we can just undo all this, split them out and connect them up. And that's that part done. Cable tie this back together. And then these little lights here, these just need extending, to be honest with you. That's a really good connection, I like that. Happy. What we'll do is we'll cable tie them onto the the um, washer jet line. And what we'll do is we'll use Velcro ties rather than cable ties. That way we can't crush the washer line. Let's stick this in. And give that cable a little pull. Well, we'll give the sleeve a little pull. So it's sitting right up behind here. Just hide all that off. Right, I'll dress it from that end back to here. And if you've never seen these before, they're used in uh, IT industry. They're really good. Um, the hardest part is separating them. So you get like a bunch of a hundred. You just peel them off. They are literally Velcro. Got a little slot in them and you just wrap it round. If you don't want to crush something, or you know that you're going to be altering it time and time again, these are the things you need. There you go, all dressed in, nice. That should, uh, as the bonnet closes down, it shouldn't foul there. Felt road all the way along. What we've done there, we've looped back and went behind, leave a nice little lease on that loop and then dressed everything back through to the other side. Again, make that nice and loose. It's got a cable tie there on the bottom of the bracket. It's also a cable tied there. And uh, Alexa, stop. Don't want to get a copyright claim against me. So that's our joint box from earlier. That's our, bra uh, our relays for this, for the daylight runner and the spot lamp. That's our little assembly there so i'm going to button all this back up oh yeah we've made the final connection there so no few excuse me <coughs> no fuses in yet this one here i've still to do a little bit of work on and this one here is all done by the by the screaming and shouting so we can plug the switch in and uh, have a quick look at that see if it works so we've plugged the switch in and we've got a red light because there's no fuse it's a 10 amp fuse. There you go. That was kind of a positive click. Yep, <laughs> they're both on. Cool. 
Let's have a little look at that. Oh, wow, they're fucking bright. Oh, gosh, they're bright. <laughs> they're lighting up Cliff's workshop anyway. Cliff. Yeah, they're, they're pretty bright. What do you reckon? Yeah, they are bright, aren't they? I'm, I'm... <laughs> so a little trick to finish off your installation. Where you've got any bolts with threads protruding, just put some heat shrink over it. So that, that is a big heat shrink. I put that over and, and uh, put some heat on it and got it down. And then I've shoved a little bit that's slightly smaller over the thread and it makes that look a lot tidier. I think it just finishes everything off. So that's where we are. We're uh, we've got the spots fitted, and I'll be honest with you, the quality of these is second to none. Mount them with the mule bracket, and you've got a flawless addition to your van. I really do love these um, so much. So <laughs> I'm not going to put anything else up there. Next part for us is to fit the aux beam light bar. It's up there now. But it's not been easy. We've had to do a bit of, bit of a work around. Initially, we mounted it, and I positioned it quite far forward, thinking if the air went over and under it, it'd be nice and quiet. I went wrong there. <laughs> I was really wrong. Over 60 mile an hour, and basically it sounded like a, a turbine on a on a jet engine. You know when you land, and they put it in reverse. It sounded like that. It was horrendous. But anyway. We've fixed it now, so in the next video we'll show you how we did all that. But yeah, I've, I really love this combination. The spotlights punch through, give you a good bit of distance, and the floodlight, the high beam, just floods the area. The high beam, the light bar, just floods the area when, you, when you've got it all on. And honest to God, absolutely brilliant. Love it. Wish I'd done it sooner, because it makes a massive difference around here. When we're driving along these country lanes, it's 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 not good. Um, but yeah, once we get that video out, we will then look at how to install all these onto your standard lights on your van, how to switch them, and we'll cover that in another video. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Why not head over and check out our new website? www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group The Crafty Blinder Van Builds Thanks for watching